past the blaring light of the hallway, I could only see her silhouette. There's a monster in the closet, she said. My wife was more awake than me. She started to get out of bed. No, my daughter said. You don't go, mommy. Daddy is braver. Peter, you hear that? Apparently, you're braver. My wife mumbled as she slid back into the covers. I am, I said. The girl took after her mother with the overactive imagination. This wasn't the first time our daughter had woken us up in the middle of the night with abstract fears, and I feared it wouldn't be the last. As I dug my slippers out from beneath the bed, I convinced myself that with a bit of rational thinking, I could put an end to these 2am wake-ups. It's the squiggle again, she whispered, dangling her legs from the bed. The squiggle was just another in a long list of creatures that would hide in my daughter's closet. There were goblins, there were bears, and after a fumbled explanation of world politics, Osama bin Laden shared the closet space for about a month. That night, it was the squiggle. She kept on looking at the closet door, expecting me to open it like I always did. But I didn't. Instead, I sat down next to her on the bed. Can you describe the squiggle to me, Annie? I said. She looked back at the closet as if she was asking it for permission to speak. It doesn't feel real, she finally whispered. Well, Annie, that's because... It's like spaghetti, but with eyes, and it's on fire. Her eyes were filling up with tears again. It doesn't feel real. It's like a drawing. A drawing that no one should ever draw. It doesn't feel real. Annie, have you ever considered the squiggle doesn't feel real because it isn't actually real? What does consider mean? She asked, wiping her tears. It's when you think about something really hard... It's when you think about something you thought was true, but you think about it really hard and you realise it's not true. The thoughts of the closet drifted from her face. She was no longer a scared child. She was a young mind trying to make sense of the world. Do you ever consider things? Yes, I said, all the time. And does it help? When I was about your age, your grandfather used to take me to the lake every weekend. One time, while we were out swimming, he told me that there was an angry octopus that lived inside of the lake that ate little boys. I got so scared, I refused to get back in the water. And was there an octopus? No, your grandfather was just playing a trick on me. There was never any octopus in the lake, but I didn't believe that. The octopus felt real to me. After hearing your grandfather's story, I was sure I could feel the octopus in the water. I was sure he was there. But then you considered that he wasn't there, my daughter said thoughtfully. There was awe in her voice, as if I'd revealed some grand cosmic secret to her. You considered, and you weren't scared anymore. A bit of the summer breeze drifted in through the open window. My daughter no longer seemed scared. I felt like a good dad. Do you want to consider that maybe the squiggle is just a figment of your imagination? What's a figment? It doesn't matter. Just consider that there is no monster in your closet. Okay. She shut her eyes in concentration. For a moment, she struggled with the thoughts, but then her eyes opened. She smiled. Thank you, Daddy, she said. Outside, the sky was a chaotic smattering of stars. Somewhere off in the distance, a police siren crawled into the night. I was the only one looking at the closet. Not scared anymore? I asked. No, I consider the squiggle might not be real, and now I'm not scared. Great, I said and got up. Good night, Annie. Good night, Daddy. She pulled her unicorn covers over herself and shut her eyes. I looked at the closet. It was covered with cartoon horse stickers that had fused themselves into the wood. The closet would forever remain covered in ponies. It perplexed me how anyone could be scared of such a harmless piece of furniture. 
Hey, Annie? I said, eyeing the closet handle. Want me to check inside of the closet? She sat up in bed, confused. Why? There's nothing there. Another rush of pride went through my lungs. The talk had gone better than expected. For old time's sake, I said. She laughed at me, as if I was ridiculous for suggesting that something might be in the closet, but she sat up in bed to get a better view. I grabbed the handle and prepared to swing the door open in a theatrical fashion, but I couldn't. I was positive that there was nothing in the closet. I knew that the squiggle was just a product of my daughter's imagination. I even found the idea of spaghetti with eyes to be a bit funny. Yet, somewhere deep within me, a primal fear bubbled. I was consciously aware that the closet was empty, but there was doubt in my heart. Daddy? She asked. Are you scared? No, I said. I'm not scared. I pulled open the door and defiantly stared into the abyss of tiny dresses and coats. For a brief moment, my rational mind took control and chastised me for being overly dramatic. But then, in the darkness of the clothes, I saw movement. I saw that blasphemous monstrosity which confounded my entire perception of the universe. I saw that horrid nightmare pried from the depths of God's fever dreams. I saw the squiggle. The visage of the corroded flesh stole the blood from my face. Its sickly eyes stared deep into my soul. My knees became weak. I couldn't stand in the same world that the monstrosity existed in. The unyielding pressure of an incoming faint pushed my body off balance. Before the curtains of reality came down, I remember swaying toward the closet. My face became intimately familiar with one of the cartoon horse stickers my daughter had attached to the furniture. With a dull wooden thud, I lost consciousness. I awoke to the sensation of frozen peas pressed against my forehead. The lights were on. I was on the couch in the living room. Next to me sat my wife. One hand on the makeshift ice pack, the other gripped around her phone. Should I call an ambulance? She asked. No, I said. No, I'm fine. You're shaking. I was. The afterimage of the horror was still bouncing around my skull. The unexplainable madness that I had witnessed was still sending twitches through my shivering muscles. I'm fine, I repeated. What happened? My mouth felt like it was full of battery acid. There were no words to explain the ghastly fiend that I had seen hiding in my daughter's closet. I wanted to scream. I wanted to pray. I wanted to beg the heavens for some sort of an explanation to the cruel images that were seared into my mind. I... fell, I finally said. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. She lifted the frozen piece off my forehead. It doesn't look like you'll need stitches. Good, I said. I wasn't there. I wasn't sitting on the couch being tended to by my wife. I was somewhere else. I was standing, stark naked, before a cruel world I never knew existed. A horrible blizzard of incomprehensible shapes was freezing my bones. I was a frail worm, face to face with the Goliath of the Abyss. I was nothing in a world that meant me harm. Yet suddenly, past the fear, past the soul-shattering features of the abomination, something recognisable took hold. A familiar worry grasped my being. I sat up on the couch. Where's Annie? Sleeping, my wife said. I came as soon as I heard the crash. The blood from me cut scarred her for a bit, but she was tuckered out enough to fall asleep. I got up and moved straight towards my daughter's bedroom. My fear of that horrid creature had not passed. With every step towards a room, my jaw clenched tighter and tighter, but my legs carried me regardless. I needed to make sure my child was safe. She was lying in bed, deep in her dreams. The unicorn covers were pulled over her face. Her closet was shut. Are you coming back to bed? 
my wife's touch made me flinch. I couldn't keep my eyes off the closet. There was a dark spot where my forehead met the furniture. I'm going to clean up the blood, I said. Don't wait up. Are you sure you're fine? Yeah, I lied. The damp cloth from the kitchen didn't make a difference. I was too late. My blood had soaked into the cartoon horse sticker. The red splotch would be a permanent feature on my daughter's closet. I would always be reminded of what I had seen. I considered whether the creature that I had seen could have been a byproduct of a lack of sleep, but the thought refused to take hold. The body of the creature had managed to seem both impossible and unavoidably real in the same stroke. I knew that I could not sleep unless I convinced myself the horror had never been real to begin with. With my mind turning faint again, I touched the handle of the closet. My vision was starting to blur. A familiar sound of static started to buzz around my ears, but I didn't let go of the closet door. I needed to confront reality. I needed to believe that the squiggle wasn't real. The empty closet did not lighten my heart. It simply reminded me of what I saw. It simply made the memory of the burning bush of flesh and eyes shine brighter. The squiggle ran away. She looked at me from a unicorn bed. There was a calmness in her voice which suggested the hellspawn we had both witnessed wasn't a thing worth worrying about. You saw it? You saw that... that thing? She nodded her head. After you hit your head in the closet door, it crawled over you and jumped out the window. Crawled over me? I yelled, louder than I should have. I could hear my wife switch on the night lamp in the bedroom. Yeah, my daughter replied casually. The squiggle went over your tummy and out the window. It's okay, it's not real. The thought of those wet strands of flesh crawling over my body made me feel incurably violated. My abdomen was no longer my own. It belonged to that horrible nightmare. But you saw it? Yes. And you're not scared? No, she said, smiling. I considered whether the squiggle was real, and now I'm brave like you. I wanted to grab her and tell her that she should be scared. I wanted to tell her that what she saw, what we both saw, was something that should inspire wails and despair but her innocent smile made me turn away. Her fragile mind had made peace with the squiggle. I was the only one being haunted. Good night, Annie, I said, closing a window and locking it. Good night, Daddy, she replied, descending back into a blanket. My wife was standing in the doorway of the bedroom, concerned. I told her I couldn't go back to sleep. I told her I needed to be alone. I told her I was going to watch some television. The screen is tuned to the static of a dead channel. The ashtray is full and the bottle is half empty. We live in a universe that means us harm. We live in a godless world where unhealthy abominations hide in little girls' closets. Regardless of how much I drink or how hard I try to rationalize, I cannot convince myself otherwise. All of the windows in the house are shut and locked but I can hear the birds starting to sing outside. A new day is starting, but I am unable to face it. I cannot carry on knowing that thing is somewhere out there, crawling through the grass. I drink more, praying that the liquor will help me forget. I drink more, desperately hoping that I'll be able to convince myself that the abomination was a trick of the eye. I drink more, knowing it won't help.